Patrick Tuttle, the real estate guy with Legacy Real Estate Services with FAQ Friday for today. It is Friday the 29th of June and man has June flown by. So today's topic is on what happens after I get an offer on my house and this comes in from Raymond. Raymond, I'll be right back with the answer. Alright, so I'm back with the answer and Raymond, your question is what happens when an offer comes in on your house? So if you've got your property for sale, whether it's from a realtor or whether you're doing a for sale by owner and a buyer says, hey, I'll buy the property for X. Well, typically you're going to get an offer, at least in our market, you're going to get an offer for less than what you're asking. That's just typical in our market. Other parts of the country, you might get an offer for much more than you're asking just because of the demand and the demographics of the buyer pool that are in that market. If you're represented by a realtor, my recommendation is that your realtor would first give you what's called an estimated net proceeds worksheet so that you can see what your estimated net on a positive side would be or what you might be writing a check for if you are on the negative side. So that's what I like to start with because I want to show my owners where they're starting from a financial standpoint. Some of them are looking right at break even and they just want to get rid of the property because they don't live here anymore. They don't want to be a landlord. They don't want to have property here when they live back on the East Coast. Others, they might be looking at the property to say, you know what, I bought this at the height of the market. Has the market improved enough over the downfall? Has it improved enough to where I can sell it at a positive number? So I always start with the estimated net proceeds so that the owner can make a, de a decision on what their bottom line would be when they sell. Once you have an agreement, either verbally or in writing, between the buyer and the seller, then the broker, if brokers are involved, they would put the date of acceptance and that's what we call the effective date or the date of execution on a contract. And typically from there, you're going to take the contract to a title company for processing and there's going to be some contingency things that go on during a period which is in Texas it's called the option period in our neighbor to the west in New Mexico. It's a due diligence period in which we do inspections, we ask for resolutions on uh, deficiencies, and then we go to a solution in which we uh, re resolve the objections that are on a property. So depending on which state you're in, Texas or New Mexico or somewhere else, you may call it something different, but we've got some processing time that goes on and then you go towards closing or termination of the contract, whichever it is that the buyer chooses. If you go to closing, maybe loans are involved, you've got loan applications, you've got to get documents in. There are a whole slew of things that can go on. Now in the essence of time, if you want to see my five-part series of what happens after you get a contract on your house to sell, send me an email, patrick at patricktuttle.com, and I'll be happy to send you that five-part series video of what happens after I get a contract to sell my house, and you'll learn all the things, including the 88 ways in which you can lose the contract on your house. For the rest of you out there, thanks for watching. I pray that if you've got questions for me, you would send me a message either here on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, wherever it is that you're watching it. Call me here at the office, 915-585-7777 or patrick at patricktuttle.com. Thanks for watching. God bless you and make it a great day. Bye-bye.